So music's been quite a big part of my life as a PhD and kind of my life in general recently. Um, so I thought I'd dedicate this whole mini-sode to talking about it whilst kind of the rest of my life happens. If this stuff doesn't interest you, then come back next mini-sode and there'll be something different. The reason I bring this up today is because today we have our second Even Song of Term. So I'm in the music practice rooms here in Cornwall House to um, rehearse it a little bit over lunchtime. But I thought whilst I'm here, I could uh, talk about my musical journey, I guess. So as with a lot of people, I guess, my musicality uh, largely comes from my parents, though interestingly I seem to be the middle of the two, because my mum is a singer, um, she's, she's an opera singer, uh, amateur, and um, is phenomenally musical, and she actually plays the saxophone now as well. By contrast, my dad was asked to uh, stop his piano lessons by his piano teacher, so... Um, yeah, I'm kind of somewhere in between the two. So I wanted to tell this story in a more interesting way than just me sit down for, you know, have many minutes and talk the entire time. So we'll be popping back to Cornwall House to hear the next chapter um, every so often. Now I need to crush a bug that I've identified. I'm like a code entomologist, not a code etymologist. Though that would be pretty cool, actually. Now, for the longest time, I wasn't musical at all. Um, I didn't exactly show much promise. My mum would, um, my mum would take stickers and put them on the piano that we had at home for her practicing, with like C, D, E, F written on them. Um, but I don't think I showed much, much promise. Um, I just basically, in the words of my mum, I wasn't very disciplined, and I didn't, I, I just didn't have the right mindset for it at all. So for quite a long time, I was not musical in any way. So I identified uh, this problem earlier, which I've partially fixed, well rather I have now corrected what the problem was, but I think it's causing problems further down the line. This is very vague, I'm going to save this scintillating discussion of the distinction between geopotential and what it's relevant to um, for tomorrow, because you know, can't put all the quality stuff in too soon. Suffice to say, um, one set of problems with that bit of code is in replace with another set, but I think they're, well they're certainly easier to understand, not this, wow that's bright. Hello, but I think they'll be easier to fix. So, you know, that's a job for tomorrow, Simon. For now, Simon, I've got to go do some singing. Oh, I love it. Hang on. I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> now, this isn't to say that I wasn't interested in music, because I was. I was exposed to a lot of music when I was a kid. Uh, when we were in the car, we had tapes. Tapes, by the way, for young people, are like C... Oh god, you don't even have CDs anymore. They were like mini phones or iPods, but they only played like eight songs, and you couldn't rewrite them. Well, some of them you could. So yeah, we had these tapes in the car, um, and in particular, I remember listening to a lot of Meatloaf, uh, Dire Straits, The Beatles, I had, a, I had my own copy of Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. So, basically, not a huge amount of classical influence, but quite a long time. Um, yeah, I didn't exactly, even with mum being an opera singer, um, I went to some of her rehearsals, but I didn't exactly grow up with classical music. So often in music you find notes from previous scholars. I think this might be my favourite one I've ever found. So we've done some pretty banging services in our time, but that might well be the best service we've ever sung. The music was tough, like really difficult music, but I'm, we, we nailed it. Considering the amount of music, it also wasn't too long, because the anthem was 15 minutes long, which normally means that the service is over an hour, but we kept the prayer short, basically, so everyone could go home.
Fucking hell, you're trying to give me a heart attack today. My first exposure to classical music was um, playing the cornet. I basically, I heard the, um, a, a bugler playing the last post on TV and I was like, I want to do that. Um, and so I had a couple of years of lessons playing the cornet. The cornet, for those who, it's not like an ice cream thing. It's a mini trumpet. Um, and I could probably still play one. I can still do brass uh, mouthpieces. Mouth They're all basically the same. Um, but I haven't played for over a decade. The real breakthrough came when I started playing saxophone, which was, if I'm honest, the instrument I would have wanted to have started playing, but um, I was a bit intimidated by the number of keys because there are so many on a saxophone and there are only three on a cornet. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go for the easier thing. So amazing to come out to chapel and it be gorgeous, like super, super green and sunny like this. In the winter you get used to coming out of services and it's really dark, but this is so nice. I mean, come on, this is obscene. It's like the Mediterranean. It's so nice this evening that I'd love to go for a run, but I feel like three runs in three days is a little bit excessive. So I'm gonna go for another swim. Um, but yeah, when I started playing saxophone, um, I started off with a lot of jazz, but actually one of the, the pieces that I really got attached to was the Cello Suites by Bach. Um, and there's a transcription for saxophone and I've been, um, I was studied them for several years and like tried to get my skill up where I could play them. Uh, maybe someday I could do that on YouTube, but um, yeah, and I played saxophone um, in school uh, and with lessons and in wind band uh, for right the way up until um, I left school and then when I went to Oxford. Paul was booked by the swimming club, I can't go in. Such a nice evening. I came in for Jess and I was so tired, um, my baked food cupcakes. <laughs> and like, I was literally exhausted and I was like, you know what, like, I'll do it now and like, this will be the work. Oh, so nice. <laughs> So at Oxford, I uh, continued to play saxophone in an unauditioned wind band, um, which was needed. Um, I think it was at Oxford that I realised just how important music was to me, because for the first year I didn't play, and I realised just how much I missed it. Um, uh, you know, even just playing two hours a week, it, really, it was quite low-level stuff, um, was so beneficial to my mental health. Um, you know, it, it kind of kept me on my last slither of sanity um, through Oxford. Um, but I didn't do anything other than that. I, I didn't, um, do, for example, do any singing. Oh, it's done that thing again. Oh. It's... Yeah, so this camera took a little bit of a tumble earlier. Um, yeah, it slightly fell off. I'll pixelate your face, don't worry. So, they can't see you smiling. Oh. So, because the pool was closed, um, and we didn't feel like going for another run. Mm, this makes it look like I like you. Oh. I cooked you a really nice dinner! <laughs> I'm joking. On a scale of one to piff, how good was it? Piff. You use piff all the time. Yeah, no, I say it, piff. Oh! <laughs> ah! <laughs> So the majority of the musical life you've seen me uh, engaged with in these vlogs is stuff like this. It's, it's stuff for Evensong and Eucharist and stuff done with chapel choir. But I didn't sing until I came to Exeter. As a matter of fact, the only reason that I'm singing at all um, is because I went to an audition to impress a girl, uh, which worked, I'd like to point out. Um, and because um, the person in that audition like my voice, even though I'd had no training, I, I, to date I still haven't had a single singing lesson in my life. Um, they liked my voice and thought that I could pick up sight reading quickly enough that um, they gave me a place in their choir. And then because of that audition, I then had another audition. And then because of that audition, uh, I was then offered a place in chapel choir, which is where I've been since. So literally, the, the whole reason that I do this stuff week in, week out now, um, it's because I wanted to impress a girl and I got in a little bit too deep.
And that basically leads up to the present day. Um, I'm a choral scholar, so I, get, I actually get paid to sing. Um, and I was the vice president of the Acapella Society on campus uh, until the, the great Acapella War of 2014. And I love it. I absolutely love it. And in a way, I'm annoyed at myself for not having started music and singing in particular earlier. It has been the best way to make friends. The friends I've made through Chapel Choir have been the closest friends I've, I've made in Exeter and some of the closest friends in my life because there's something unique about going through a performance together and particularly about singing because there's nothing between you and the music. There's no instrument. There's just... You are the instrument, the air is your tool. Um, and so when you have a group of people who come together and bring music to life that was written down hundreds of years ago to elicit the same emotional response through your, you know, your control of air, through your bodies basically, um, to elicit that same response as was intended 400 years ago, cameras falling, is amazing. Now I actually need to get on with practicing because I've talked for ages, um, but I'd really like to learn if you're musical because I think a lot of people in the comments um, I've seen before have been musical and in particular um, a lot of singers. So down there, if you've got an interesting musical story, um, uh, but you know how you've gotten to where you are, because I think I've shown that there's no one set path to musicianship. Um, I certainly wasn't a musician for all my life. I still struggle to call myself a musician now, to be honest. I, I, I always think it's interesting to hear other people's versions. So. Uh, do comment if you've, if you've got your musical story um, and where you started, where you are now, and maybe if you're thinking about doing it in the future, what you'd like to do. I know it can come off as kind of facetious um, to, to feign interest in your audience, but genuinely I'm really interested. My favourite part of being a YouTuber is the interactions with you guys and learning about your lives. So, you know, I talk about me for long enough, I want to hear about you. So, while I get back to this, comment down there.